வணக்கம் ஐ எம் அ செல் பயாலஜிஸ்ட் ட்ரைங் டு ஸ்டடி ஏன்ஷியன்ட் சயின்ஸ் யூசிங் மாடர்ன் பயாலஜிக்கல் டெக்னிக்ஸ் யூ மே பி லாஃபிங் இஃப் ஐ ஆஸ்க் யூ ஹவு மெனி ஆஃப் யூ ஆர் ப்ரீத்திங் ஐ சர்டன்லி ஹோப் யூ ஆல் ஆர் பட் டு வி ரியலி பே அட்டென்ஷன் டு ஹவு வி ப்ரீத் டு வி நோ ஹவு டு ரெகுலேட் அவர் ப்ரீத்திங் பிகாஸ் ரெகுலேட்டட் ப்ரீத்திங் ஹேஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் ஹெல்த் பெனிஃபிட்ஸ் there are so many ways to regulate breathing yogic breathing or pranayama is just one of them if you all could join me for one long humming please sit up and take nice deep breath fill your tummy fill your chest and hum Thank you. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Now you learned one yogic breathing technique and you are one step closer to your better health. By the end of this talk, I will convince you that yogic breathing is good for health. I'm from India, from the state called Tamil Nadu. We speak a language called Tamil. Tamil is also an ancient culture and civilization. we practice a natural medicine called siddha medicine i was born in a small village called karambakudi my grandmothers were medical practitioners we practice siddha medicine my grandmothers were midwives as well they help young women deliver babies and take care of their young infants our grandfathers were medical practitioners as well when i was little my father and uncles would teach me yoga as a child i didn't like it just like my children right now <laughs> when i was in high school my father would send me to one of my uncles siddha clinic as soon as you enter into the clinic you can smell the wonderful aroma of cumin coriander cinnamon cardamom and so many herbs it's a wonderful aroma one side you will see freshly squeezed leaf extract the other side you will see the boiling decoction of barks and roots my uncle is a very wise man he would feel the pulse of a patient and then would ask a question how long have you been having this tummy ache or how long the chest pain bothering you then he would give them those natural medicines I was so fascinated by this I was wondering what is in these natural compounds that make them feel better I vividly remember we were always uh, often visited by one grandfather he would talk about yogic breathing and he would just show the sky and then say I'm going to drink milk and then start inhaling it looked strange to me at that time and i was but i was wondering what is in the air that nourishes him i wanted to understand the chemistry behind it i took my chemistry for my bachelor's degree i was fortunate to go to a college where i can do yoga meditation chanting and get a degree in chemistry <laughs> later i applied that chemistry into biological systems did my masters in, and phd in biochemistry came to this country to do research in cell biology all these years i've been carrying yoga with me during tough times i found a lot of relaxation from yoga i was wondering what is in yoga that changes me how is it good for me one important clue came from one of my visits to india i bought this book called tirumandiram written by saint tirumulat several centuries ago there was one chapter i was fascinated to it was on yogic breathing i found one song or poem or sutra on how to do the yogic breathing i decoded the meaning of it i devised a method to practice it after some time of practice one fine morning i found there was more salivary stimulation I was surprised maybe it's just one day 
But every time I practiced, there was more salivary stimulation. I thought, wow, this is a great way for people with dry mouth conditions, say Sjogren's syndrome, radiation therapy, aging, and so on. As a biochemist, I also know that saliva has so many compounds, it is not just a digestive fluid. It has proteins, hormones, growth factors, and so on. One of them was nerve growth factor. As the name says, it is a protein that helps the nerve cells, the neurons, to grow, survive, withstand stress, and live longer. And nerve growth factor is reduced found in low levels in Alzheimer's patients. So nerve growth factor is administered as a therapeutic agent to those patients. I was thinking that this may be a great way to treat or prevent Alzheimer's disease. So I went to a, an eminent scientist in this area. I told him my idea. He said, I like this idea. I trust you, but I want to verify. You probably are familiar with the term, trust and verify. So I went home, did the yogic breathing exercise, brought the sample to the lab, tested it. Yes, there was more induction of nerve growth factor. Or maybe it's just me. So I called my son, 10 years old by then. I asked him to do the exercise. And he uh, looked at me and said, you want me to spit in this tube? You! <laughs> well, that's what fathers do to the children. He did the exercise and gave me the sample, and then I tested it. Yes, there was more nerve growth factor in his sample also. Then I conducted a clinical trial. One group of people with control, one group of people doing the yogic breathing exercise. Now I have a name for the yogic breathing exercise, Thirumular Pranayama. So those people who did the yogic breathing exercise had more nerve growth factor. It's a proof of principle. Not only nerve growth factor, we found later 22 different proteins, growth factors, hormones, and those are involved in various conditions, including cancer, immune response, stress, and pain. We are so thrilled by this finding. You may be wondering, what is there in the spit that is going to make me better, right? This is my proposal. So, Yogic breathing stimulates salivary secretion, and the saliva, can, the, the compounds or the uh, principles in the saliva, say nerve growth factor, or several other factors in the saliva, can be transported to the central nervous system through specific transport mechanisms. Or it can be absorbed into the bloodstream and available throughout the body. Or it can just stay there in the oral cavity to help us fight germs. This is a fascinating idea that you can, you can change your behavior or you can practice something that will change the components and let you uh, feel better physically and mentally. Now, I'm taking this to the community, to cancer patients, seniors, mental health patients, students, and even school children in India where yoga is not yet accessible. Remember, this is just one poem from the book which contains 3,000 poems. There's vast amount of literature which is not yet transcribed from palm leaf manuscripts, not yet translated into English. My goal is to make a bridge with that ancient wisdom. I want to end my story with one more message from Tirumandram. By the way, this is me, my only picture from when I was little. Don't you like the bow tie? <laughs> <laughs> we all want to control our minds. But controlling mind is not easy. Mind is very elusive. As the Eastern philosophy puts it, mind is a monkey. It's not a normal monkey. It's a drunken monkey stung by scorpion. <laughs> it's crazy. We cannot control it. But Thirumular says there is an easy way. Mind cannot travel on its own. Mind needs a vehicle. Mind is using a horse. That horse is your breathing. So if you want to control the mind, the rider, you have to control the vehicle, the horse. 
the breathing. So, controlling the mind is possible by controlling the breathing. Therefore, whether you sing, chant, or hum, or practice sophisticated yogic breathing techniques, mind your breathing, it will improve your health. Thank you. Manakam. <laughs>